Hey folks, welcome to this video on tips for group facilitation. Uh, this is particularly focused on if you're running groups, say, in a virtual or video uh, conference environment or trying to figure out your first few times running uh, meetings that are anywhere from, you know, three or four people up to 40 or 50. Um, so let's begin. So the first thing I always recommend is plan more, do less. Uh, identify all the things that you want to do in a meeting and then recognizing that this, if this is a one hour meeting or even an hour and a half, you're probably not going to get to half. Depending on how long that list, you may not even get to a quarter. Uh, there's always going to be too much to cover or too many things that you may want to do. Uh, what you want to do is prioritize what's most important for attendees to have by the end of a meeting. So depending on the size, always anticipate the more people you have, the less you're going to probably be able to get to do. And so kind of play around with that based on your anticipated number of attendees and what are the things you want to do. Along those lines, you know, as you're coming up with those things you want to do, you definitely want to create an agenda and uh, develop some advanced materials. So the agenda should have the details of what the flow of the time together will look like and maybe some clarity around what actions or what activities are planned so people can come in and they know what to expect. They're prepared. Uh, along those lines, you want to highlight, you know, th this agenda will highlight expectations. Let them know that, you know, it may not be a meeting where they are just there to listen, but they are expected to participate and be active in different parts. You may also use the agenda and the communicating out of the agenda to provide some prompts. I think this is really important to, you know, communicate with attendees. I want your minds thinking about this question or this idea or this concern and come to the meeting with some solutions, right? Sending out an agenda more than 25 hours in advance, including some prompts, really is an opportunity and is a clear invitation to participants to get ready to do and be there rather than just attend and be passive. Along those lines, I also encourage the use of inputs. You can send out a poll, maybe collecting topics that you think, uh, or topics that you would want, that they would want to discuss that you can include in the agenda, or you can actually create the agenda in a way such as using a Google Doc and invite them to make edits, invite them to add topics or to add to the agenda. Uh, regardless of how you do that, really the goal is kind of communicating out what expectations are and how you hope they're going to fill that. So if we've included a link here to our uh, agenda template that we encourage you to use and we'll continue to add to that uh, as we go along. A really big one and challenging one, and I'll say this for myself, is learning to talk less. Uh, while we're often the ones that are facilitating the meeting, that often lends us to think we have to be the ones doing all the talking. But a really good meeting, especially one where you have people coming in and wanting to do different things, is one in which you're not talking as much. Uh, the rule of thumb I put out there is a quarter of the time. Uh, it's hard to figure out exactly how much that is, and it's hard to really know when you're in it. But really trying to make sure and checking in with yourself or using visual cues. I'll often have a sticky note or two around my screen to, to remind myself to make sure you give space for other people to talk. It's hard, um, but you really want to try to make sure you're not the one that's talking through all the meeting. Otherwise, you're indicating that it's your space instead of a group space. Also, as you get into having a group that, you know, goes into 10 people or more, you definitely want to start to think about how you use that space and what you are looking to do. So, for instance, if you are doing check-ins and you have 30 people and you only have an hour, you could very well use up more than an hour. In fact, I've seen this happen where people have used more than an hour uh, to do check-ins and then whatever the goal of the meeting is doesn't necessarily get met. So one way to bypass that is to encourage people to do introductions via the chat. Another is to break it down a little bit and rather than having one large group check-in, you have breakout rooms and you put four or five people into a breakout room and you give them you know, five to eight minutes to converse and learn about one another. You can also use polls and I find this is also a fun way of, of doing things, of getting information, getting feedback, is if in advance of the if in the advance of the, the 
uh, actual meeting, you go and provide some polls uh, that you can put into the Zoom environment or you can send them out in advance to get a sense of where people are at and then use that as a point of discussion. Uh, you can also launch polls during to get a sense of where people uh, people's thoughts are with, with whatever questions you're asking. But the important thing really is to be thinking about, you know, it's really hard to have a 30 plus person discussion uh, and do anything else in a in a meeting. So think about how you might break that down. You know, a traditional option is think, pair, share, where people think about it by themselves for a minute or two. They get paired off. You do breakout rooms of two or three, and they share it with one another. And then you come back to the big room, you know, to the larger room, and then you maybe have half a dozen or, um, you know, you have half of the people share what it is that their group discussed. Um, so continually to be thinking about, you know, if you get into 10 or more, how do you break the space up a little bit more and not have it be everybody in one space talking um, or having to go through everybody at the same time? Because that can take away or that can be a little challenging for what your goals are. Another important thing is the silence guidance. And this is hard, especially again, if you are the person facilitating to feel the need to fill in silence. This, uh, you know, I've heard this remark, this is a particular Western thing um, or even a, an American thing. So I don't know how much, uh, how much weight to give that, but I certainly have seen and experienced a tendency of if I ask a question and I don't hear anything in three or four seconds, I start to answer it or I start to assume that, you know, the it, it, that I need to answer it or I need to fill that silence. And the reality is, especially online, give a good 10 seconds. That's hard. I know you want to count it out in your head. Even if, I, even if you give it that 10 seconds and nothing happens, I, I strongly encourage reframing the question and offering that once more one more time to wait again. And the idea here is, you know, sometimes the questions come at us and we're not prepared or the shift um, from whatever we were talking about or even what we are talking about doesn't necessarily mean we are very quick to get answers and we shouldn't necessarily be quick to get answers. So as you're looking for input from people uh, during these during these meetings, you definitely want to give some time for that. And then if you are going to call on folks, letting folks know that, you know, saying, okay, at this point, I will probably call on folks and, you know, accept, accept or giving the opportunity for people to pass, right? So if you do call on them saying, you know, if I call on you, you do have the option to pass, giving them that option. So these are just five tips, uh, ways that you can think about and look at facilitating a group meeting or, or discussion a little bit better. Uh, we have some resources here that you can certainly uh, take advantage of. And if you have other tips or other questions about how to facilitate groups, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much.